Hello everyone, it's George from Ireland and here I am in the garden of the Archbishop of Canterbury in Lambeth Palace, London. Lambeth being an area of London just south of the river. And it's a day of rare glory. It's a day when this country proclaims its fullest splendor um, and uh, the air is, is heavy with meadow sweet. And you can see that uh, all the plants around me are viridescent and everything is bloom in bloom and there's just a soft uh, breeze just a sort of zephyr you'd want to I mean it's not too hot and I can see the bluebells and the dandelions and everything else and all sorts of flowers I don't know the names of buttercups uh, and it's all multicolored and so it is sublime um, so anyway and now I begin to appreciate the benignity of nature and another another pleasing coincidence well this is where um Jeremy Thorpe had his wedding reception when he got married in goodness was it 1965 1966 I don't recall in the garden of uh, the Archbishop of Canterbury because he was sort of very pro-established in some ways I don't know what these purple flowers are called but I like the way that they've left a bit of it unconquered as well as having some um, lawns the lawns are not quite manicured um, and uh, anyway how great thou art the creator uh, so it's a very large garden. The Archbishop lives there, obviously with his good wife, his children. Well, his children are grown up now. And um, there are various other staff who live in. Um, and it used to be even bigger. There's a, bit, there's a place called Archbishop's Park. And the late 19th century, the Archbishop of Canterbury, he gave part of his garden to the public to be used as a park, a bit of a sports ground to this day. I've never in my life been into Lambeth Palace. And I was walking by, and there's a big queue, and I happened to know it's open to the public a few days a year, and I was elated to pay my five pounds. I don't know what these stones are here from. Um, and they're church army volunteers taking the money, the donation, they call it. Um, so the church army is an organization set up in the very early 20th century um, to try and get the laity more involved in Anglicanism and charitable work or whatever. It's not really an army, they don't wear a uniform, there are no guns. Um, so they just call it that. Um, it's an army in the sense the Salvation Army is an army. This is the new purpose built palace, not palace, we're not talking about um, a library to house the archives of Lambeth Palace. I do have this tendency to skip the middle of the sentence and go right on to the end. So you see a lot of people are visiting here, mostly older people. There, there is a baby in arms in his uh, or her push chair just there. Anyway, I think I won't go right down to the end of the garden, but I've seen um, all sorts like uh, I've seen um, cow parsley. Over the other side, that's where the um, park is. I remember there was one of those sort of um, death slide things, I forget what you call them, where you uh, go up to this high tower and hold on to something with your hands and then you slide down holding on to this contraption attached to a wire. Um, and Boris Johnson famously did that one, got stuck on the way in the run-up to the, to the Olympics, somehow enhanced his reputation. And over there, do you see the Tower of Big Ben? Yeah, across the river, we're just south of the River Thames. So, um, I recall when the Empress of India died in 2002, there, she lay in state at Westminster Hall, and there was a queue um, along Millbank and over Vauxhall Bridge and here, and I joined the queue more or less in front of Lambeth Palace and had to wait, was it an hour and a half, to go and see her casket, to file past it, and that was in the wee hours, it would been much longer. So here we are, what a benign experience it is. Um, anyway, so I'm feeling very blithe seeing this all, and move on towards the actual palace itself. So um, the Archbishop of Canterbury, he lives here, despite Canterbury being well outside London, the southeast, the county town of Kent. Now, why is it Canterbury? Why is the Archbishop of Canterbury rather than anywhere else? Well, when St. Augustine was sent by the Pope to evangelize for Christianity, he landed in Kent, being the closest area of England to, to the continent, and uh, there was no England as such. Um, uh, it was the former sort of Roman Britannia, and um, Britannia had split up into many different kingdoms, and the King of Kent uh, welcomed him, he received the Christian message, uh, happily and converted to Christianity and so on and so he let him build the church there's so the very first church on this island was built there in Canterbury um, a wooden church rebuilt in stone and expanded and expanded that is Canterbury Cathedral and look at all those flowers isn't it highly delightful uh, and then you can see how it's built up towards Waterloo 
the, uh, that hospital, whatever, that Florence Nightingale Hospital, is that what it's called? No, St. Thomas's Hospital, near the Florence Nightingale Museum. And a little marquee here with refreshments that can be purchased and on. And I wonder what this um, little cupula thing, or whatever you'd call it is, gazebo, over here, some sort of memorial. I'll show you, it's behind me at the moment. So it's in front of me at the moment, you can't see it. That away, that domed thing. I'll have to go and over, over there and have a look at it. Um, so proving to be reasonably popular. And you see how some of the grass is fairly well kept and in other places they've just let it uh, grow wild. So I don't like it to be too tamed. This is what I'm talking about. Is that cow parsley? Sometimes you get lint in the air and it carpets the ground. It resembles cotton. I thought there'd be some inscription telling us what this is about, this folly. Perhaps it's solely for garnishment. Maybe there's no greater significance. It seems like it's very thin stone at the top, or not even stone, as though the light is shining through it. Let me show you of what I'm talking. Uh, anyway. So I'll keep on going. And then you're getting some idea of the dimension of the garden. I didn't even go right down to the end of it. Yeah, so they're mostly coffin dodgers here today. Um, and the great hall is open. The chapel is not open at the moment. The divine worship is in progress. So there's a large great hall for um, charitable events or when the church has to entertain. The bishop can have garden parties here. It does seem somewhat that um, the church has got the wrong end of the stick over why are they squandering so much money on someone living in such opulence when they should be spending more on their charitable work, the people who live in penury. How many homeless people could they house here? And with all this money, what could they be doing to release physical, suffer physical suffering? I mean, or, you know, as your religious, spiritual suffering. And look at the sundial. Wow, I was just thinking about this, about that um, ditty that I read um, at school in um, the Provost Garden, and it's exactly the same one. Make time, save time, while time lasts, all time that's no time, when time's past. Do you see here? That's why I was saying abominate time wasting. There's a member of my family who's just appalling for that, deliberately doing it, to underline her importance and infuriate us. Um, gives her control. And then behind me, where is it? You probably can't make it out. There's a blue flag fluttering way up here, and it's got a Y on it for York, the Archbishop of York. So why is it flying that flag? Is he, is he in residence right now? And then the busy street is busy streets beyond that wall there, and the Thames is beyond that. So I've never ever been in here. I'm elated that I finally made it, um, and I might go into the Great Hall later, but I'm going to have to go quite soon. So over the moon to have seen this, something off the bucket list. And what a splendiferous day for it. Well, thank you very much for walking, for, for walking with me, as it were, in spirit, seeing these magnificent gardens, how soothing it is. Docile, but not dull. That's the sort of ambiance. And I can see these little insects buzzing around. And everyone is rejoicing. There's just so much to celebrate here with this bird bath. And they're selling honey and such, such like. Ooh. A little statue over there, another little nook to discover. Um, so I wonder what this is. Okay, it's a statue of a mother and child. How about that? I wonder where the little boy's trying to get away to. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go out to the front courtyard. Ah. So is that almost everything? I mean, the front courtyard's got a little garden too, and some curious stone memorial marking the 50th anniversary of Archbishop, um, uh, was it Donaldson? Davidson? Yeah. Randall Davidson's marriage to uh, Miss Tate, and she was from Lambeth, this area of London. The borough of Lambeth sort of goes due south of here. Brixton as part of it. Anyway, you'll get an idea what I'm talking about, the dimensions of this. So, a lofty and sturdy building in this honey-coloured sandstone behind me. And the various uh, flats up there. And the, the Great Hall over there is in dining room. 
So meetings used to take place there. And uh, when that Michael Curry came over to marry His Royal Highness Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, to uh, Miss Markle, he stayed here. So guests stay here. Wash house offices. I don't think they have a separate wash house anymore. We're not allowed down that way. So this is the front courtyard I was talking about. So you've got some idea how big this complex of buildings is. And there's a small church here, which is the Guard Museum. I've been in there, filmed it before, where Captain Bly of the mutiny on the Bounty fame is, is interred. Okay. Now you're about to see it. Over there. That's a memorial to Archbishop Davidson's marriage. Here in the middle here in the middle of these trees. It's got his coat of arms. He married Edith Tate, whose home was Lambeth, and so on a cross, somewhat obscured by the trees. Anyway, I just really delight in seeing this deep but bright green that you get at this time of year. Very early summer, it's gorgeous. Yeah, so this thing here, with that um is it a cupola, whatever, to admit the light and the weather vane. Um, that's it. Oh, and it's got the Y for York. I don't know when the province of Canterbury, southern England, um, is, is, is the province of Canterbury for the Church of England's purposes. Um, and the Great Hall, well, I think I shan't bother actually. All right, that's enough. So thank you so much for joining me on this tour of, um, of, uh, the, um, of Lambeth Palace. Well, there's actually one more courtyard, the sort of entrance courtyard. I didn't actually ask permission to film, but nobody seems to have taken the least exception to what I'm doing. And uh, I've always wondered what was behind here. I know with Google Maps you can have a very good idea of the geography of the place, but it does feel good to finally see, go into this forbidden zone. Um, because I didn't bother looking up when these things are open. It was in coronavirus, it wasn't open for a couple of years. Oh, and then I just saw the public convenience. There's a lot of work being done. So I was passing through another gateway there. Um, and this is the gateway I came in through. And then you see the um, sort of diamond pattern, the black diamond pattern on this reddish brick. And that's a mid 19th century motif. You see a lot of it at Eton, a bit of Eton College that was built in the, um, in the uh, 1860s. Okay, so we've gone to the wall, the extreme, I suppose it would be um, uh, West Wall. Is that right? Uh, because the, the river is that away, and I know the Thames is north, is north south, but this bit it goes more like east west. And there's that archway originally came in uh, the entrance to the whole place. And this is the Great Hall just here. Okay. <coughs> And that's how you come in. Anyway, so that's enough for me. Allowed to walk on the grass at least. I'll switch it off now. Thank you very much for following. Bye.